What's up, everybody? Hardest part of the ring is back, and we got a very f <laughs> we got a unique one today for you guys. Um, so my plan for this episode, just gonna lay it out right out front. Um, my plan was to do a review on Ring of Honor 2002 crowning a champion. And uh, that's what I did. However, <laughs> I will just go in and say that these guys, first of all, had some lovely, lovely guests joining me on today's episode. Uh, yes, Justin and Sretton from the Juice Pro Wrestling Podcast joined me today uh, to review this show. Uh, at least that was the intent. Um, but I will say just out front that these guys have a great podcast. You can catch them on all social media or... Uh, social media uh, maybe social media all podcast platforms and youtube as well and as always we'll have all their info in the description below go check them out seriously entertaining guys and some good dudes as well now that being said fuck these guys <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding um because uh so like i said the goal was to review this ROH show that is uh, displayed in the title of this podcast you're listening to. So I watched it. I, uh, I reached out to Justin, I believe it was, whoever controls their uh, Twitter account. I was like, hey, I got an ROH 2002 episode coming up, and I think you'd be great for that because they do a lot of you know stuff on independent wrestling, MLW, uh, and other kind of promotions that... People don't generally watch or even do podcasts on, so I was like, "Hey, be cool to get some uh, someone that's pretty knowledgeable about that that realm of pro wrestling." And they are, and they are absolutely. So I was like, "Hey, you guys want to join me on a uh, an ROH 2002 episode, crowning a champion?" And uh, <laughs> you know, is that what I said? No, I said, "I was like, hey, so you guys." Uh, so I was like, because I was just talking to Justin, right? I was like, hey, you want to join me on an ROH 2002 episode? He was like, sure. And I was like, all right, I'll send you the link to the show. It's crowning a champion 2002. And then I sent him the link to the show. And then a couple weeks go by and we get ready to record. You know, I'm all, I'm all, you know, I, 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 I'm drinking my water. I'm eating my apples to make sure my voice is nice and tart for you all. I get up here. I turn on, you know, the recorder, everybody gets in the room, we're good, you know, some, there's some mic issues, which I may or may not leave in because it was hilarious listening to them, to listening to these guys try to figure it out. But, uh, so we're all set up, I hit record, it's like, hey, great to have you guys, I mean, I don't know why I'm fucking doing the, <laughs> you're literally about to listen to it, but just, just kind of a preface before the episode. Alright, so Ring of Honor crowning a champion 2002. What'd you guys think of the show? Crickets. <laughs> they they didn't watch the show, which is fine. It's fine. I mean, you know, because people like uh, Jeremy Lopez and Barry Goldman Jr. are just guys that people know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Safe to assume that I definitely had to uh, change my plans a little bit. Um, I still kind of went over the show because, you know, for all intents and purposes, the show obviously it crowns the first Ring of Honor world champion. But other than that, there's not like too much going on in the show, so it's no big deal. But I still went over everything, all the matches and stuff. But <laughs> obviously they were very limited on uh, what they could contribute towards uh, these <laughs> The 2002 indie wrestling show that they had never seen before. So, I mean, there's guys like AJ Styles and Loki, Christopher Daniel. There, there's some interesting points on this show um, in history that they were able to uh, jump in on. And we kind of segue into more current topics as well on this show. I will say that we recorded this the day after uh, that AEW episode where Kenny Omega won the world title and then announced that he was appearing on Impact. And uh, yeah, so we had a lot, you know, all the cross-promotion stuff. 
and everything else that AEW was doing. And uh, obviously, I mean, like I said, it was the day after, so we were all very eager to talk about that anyways. So we spend a good chunk of this show talking about uh, current stuff too. Like I said, AEW, but we also dive into MLW a little bit, which is something that I've been wanting to start watching and will most likely end up start doing reviews of those shows as well. Um, but we start, we talk a little bit about that, a little bit about wrestling as a whole nowadays. Um, ended up being a really fun show, even though they didn't watch the show that I had asked them to. But anyways, it's fine. We're all fine. We're all having fun. We, we kissed and made up. And uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, I don't want to make it like, fu like fuck these guys because they are really good dudes, really good podcast. And we had a really good time. Um, it was almost funny, like, it almost made it better, because it forced me to try to describe a 2002 Ring of Honor show to people that had never seen it before, <laughs> so it almost made it more fun that way. Um, Justin, in particular, is uh, very knowledgeable about, like, early 2000s indie wrestling anyway, so he was able to um, pop in every now and then, so wasn't completely just a one-man show so but like i said we also talk about a lot of current stuff too which was fun but i'm rambling i always ramble i always say i'm not gonna ramble but now here i am rambling a rambling man uh fuck you shut up hardest part of the ring anyways without further ado <laughs> let's see what happens with this ring of honor crowning a champion 2002 etc with myself and Justin and Sretton from the Juice Pro Wrestling Podcast. All right, I mean, if you see it, like, like I said, you, you missed my joke earlier. Are you ready? Sure. This is the first threesome I've had on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like sex, right? <laughs> yeah. Like sex. I like yeah. busting cherries oh. and getting blood everywhere. <laughs> Fuck out, hide. he's our core! This guy came in hot with the period sex jokes. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get any of that out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, why the hell are you here then? It's all going to talk about ROH it's all period vanilla jokes. ice cream and that's <laughs> and vanilla. <laughs> well, as you'll as you'll hear as soon as we start, if I don't have anything to contribute, I won't derail, so I'll stay quiet. But on occasion, I'll f <laughs> I'll fuck up your guys' train of thought with some dumb question. <laughs> Feel free. That's why I invited you on here for the stupid questions. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, um, oh, God. So yeah, guys, did you guys get a chance to watch the show? Which one? The crowning a champion. I watched a little bit of it, man, but I didn't get to watch all of it. Okay, well, I, I can try to. Uh, how about who was that? Justin? That's yeah. that. Yeah. How about you, Threaten? Did you get a chance to watch it? Uh, I didn't know I was supposed to watch anything. My bad, dude. Okay. Somebody yeah. had a fucking terrible guest. We came in. We came into this totally fucking unprepared. I'm sorry, dude. That's totally fine. You know. You know what? We'll work with it. We'll work with it. I mean, you know. Um, let's see here. What are some names we had on the show? You guys. You guys know uh, Christian York, right? Yeah, he was ECW TNA. Um, wow. Well, actually, well, I was not expecting you to to know that. Hold on, let me find somebody else. Oh. Uh, Try harder. Here. Try again. How about Adam Jacobs? Yeah, Adam Jacobs' uh, name sounds really familiar. Um, that sounds like a lie to me. No, it does sound familiar, but maybe I'm just thinking of Glenn Jacobs. That's a very different person. Yeah. <laughs> Hellfire! Adam Jacobs <laughs> from ROH? This is ROH, yeah. This, this show is, is an ROH show. Well, not this show, but this episode is. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know what ROH is? Yeah, Ring yes. of Honor. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> no, actually, though, did you guys? So, like, were you guys watching in 2002 by any chance? Yeah. Like, from the beginning? Um, a little bit here and there. To be honest with you, I was more, um, I was still up on what WWE was trying to do at the time, but also it really into fucking TNA. You were in a TNA. Oh, yeah. Man, I've never heard that before. See, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what, what did you think? Because I've never actually met anybody that was watching at the time. What did you think of ROH like back in 2002 and like how they evolved? Like, I'm assuming you kind of stuck with them for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, like starting off, I was just, you know, there wasn't much to it. I, I, I From what I knew, Ring of Honor was started by like, the, I think it was the guys who used to do a bunch of the fucking 
uh, shoot interview videos with like the EC dub guys and stuff back in the day. R- RF video. Yeah. RF video. And then there was also one of the owners was like a pedophile or some shit. Uh, I mean, I believe it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I didn't think too much of them other than just watching and, uh, you know, seeing some of the talent and obviously when like Eddie Guerrero was sent there, that was pretty mm-hmm. awesome. Um, I just I enjoyed the in ring product. I I thought it was kind of more of a continuation of what ECW could have been, minus all the like gore aspects of right. it. You know, like just as far as technical the sport of professional wrestling. Well, yeah, it's interesting that you say that because that's kind of like how. Oh man, somebody's cracking up a cold one. <laughs> oh hell yeah! yeah. That's a tasty boy I hear in the background. Um, <laughs> but speaking of tasty boys, uh, ROH. Oh, that was bad after the pedophile thing. Um, but yeah, Ring of Honor back in the beginning was like all about like, oh, we're not sports entertainment. We're real wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> we're sports. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but then. Reminds me of Tim God. and Eric. Remember sports. <laughs> of course. Sorry. No, no, it's it's fine. It's better than what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, it was like this show in particular had a lot of like sports entertainment kind of shit. And I don't know. Have either of you guys ever seen this show before? Crowning a champion? It's it's, it's a show as it, the title suggests. It's where when they crown the first world champion in ROH. Uh, no, I've just seen clips from it. I haven't watched it all the way through. No. Okay. Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, I mean, we'll get into it, I guess. But uh, so the premise of the show basically. So, so the show before this, there was basically a lot of it was basically a tournament, which culminated into four finalists, and those final four were in a uh, a one hour Iron Man Fatal Four Way match. What low show. key? Low key was in. And, he ended up winning, right? Hey, spoiler alert, man! We yeah. we got to build up to it. We got to build up to the Remember, main event. We want to go way back. Remember the spoiler from World Class. <laughs> no, I don't. Do uh-huh. it for me. There you go. <laughs> Google it. I will not. I will not. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. So the main the, the main event here is, is so it's low key as you said versus Christopher Daniels mm-hmm. versus Doug Williams versus yeah. Spanky. Oh. And uh, yeah, Ring of Honor back then was just a lot of. I mean, it's very like indie wrestling. Right, like when you're just like the clothes people are wearing, the moves they're doing, the promo. Oh my god, the promos! If you guys, this show is worth watching just for the terrible promos. I mean, <laughs> just like the the, the back that's like in a janitor's closet. Like, hey, cut a promo real quick, please. Yeah, but I mean, in in that aspect, uh, you can't really fault them. I mean, some, you know, they were starting out and coming out of, like, what do you do after all these? You know, ECW and WCW are gone and. Out of the ashes of that, you know? I mean, to at least try to start a company was a pretty fucking bold move, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's definitely like a building period mm-hmm. for them. They're kind of still figuring it out at this point. And I've said before in, like, previous ROH episodes I've done that, like, this point in 2002, like you said, ECW, WCW, those those guys are gone. They're, you know, like you said, their ashes are on the floor. And really, WWE is the only wrestling that there is other than TNA that's pretty much just starting at this point. Right, right. But uh, yeah, Ring of Honor is trying to give something different. And at times they, they hit the mark, but uh, it wouldn't be till like a few years later to w- when they really hit their stride, I think. Do you like promotions in a janitor's closet? Watch Ring of Honor 2002 crowning the champion. <laughs> and then like the the Microsoft Paint like videos that they would do with the <laughs> star swipe transitions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. The more you know. <laughs> do, 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 do. So we get so this show starts out. I'm not gonna get into every single promo and everything because we this fucking podcast would be five hours long. But there was a particularly bad one in the beginning of the show with Steve Carino. Oh yeah. <laughs> with Simply Luscious. You guys Simply oh. Luscious fans? <laughs> uh, not at all. No. <laughs> do, you know, do you know who Simply Luscious is? Not at all. No. She's 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 very luscious. Ah. Um but apparently she she trained at uh yes, yes, uh-uh. Felatio, et cetera. And she apparently she's she trained at Shawn Michaels school in Texas. Okay. But it's two thousand two, so women are whores. 
<laughs> you said it, not me. Hey, I, I didn't say it. They re- they repeated it in this show yeah. time and time again. <laughs> this was a bad time for women's wrestling, by the way. Oh, dude. The, uh, I mean, we'll get into it like when it comes in the show, but the commentary, because Steve Carino and Donnie B are the commentators on this show. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of women bashing and a lot of gay bashing. Oh, a lot of gay bashing. And who's getting bashed for being gay, you ask? Well, it's the Christopher Street Connection. Who uh, Are you guys familiar with these fellows? Um, who is, who's is in there? I, I don't recognize that name. I don't know their individual names. I just know that they uh, are very gay. And <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, dude, it's, but it's like, it looks like they took two straight guys and were like, hey, you guys, be as gay as you could possibly be. Grab each other's dicks right now. You're joking, but that's literally what it is. Oh, yeah. They're they're walking backstage with bananas. Oh, God. Do you get it? <laughs> yeah. I get it's it. like dicks. Yeah, they like <laughs> dicks because they're gay. They're gay. They're gay, and, so they uh, only eat phallic-shaped objects? That's what <laughs> they, that was that's that time in works. wrestling? <laughs> if it doesn't look like a dick, I'm not putting it in my mouth. Anyways, let's <laughs> wrestle. <laughs> they didn't work for Vince. That's why Undertaker's scared of cucumbers, I think. Mm. True story. <laughs> it's a true story. I only spit facts on this show. Nice. <laughs> well, at least you don't swallow them. No, no, I'm a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> what a, That's set what a booing you. <laughs> I've made an awful mistake inviting you guys on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this first match here, Tony Mama Luke yeah. versus Jeremy Lopez. Uh, I know Ta- I know Tony Mamaluke. Do you guys know who Jeremy Lopez is? No, I don't know Jeremy Lopez. Tony Mamaluke, though, from the full-blooded Italians, EC Dub. Yes, sir. And Jeremy Lopez is basically the same thing. Yeah, I was watching this match, and I was like, who's who? Um, but it's funny because... So the main event on this show is an hour long. So there's several points during it where they're like rushing it. So they like, instead of an actual match, they'll just do like a highlight reel kind of thing like a fast-forwarded type match or whatever. And uh, this is one of them. So it was a very, you know, it was a one-at-whatever match. Um, The whole storyline here, because Nunzio is also there, which I believe he appears later. And Nunzio, the other half of the full-blooded Italians, or however many there are on there, (laughs) um, he's, like, trying to get away from that gimmick, because this is after ECW, but before WWE. That's very important. So he's trying to like get away from the full blooded Italians gimmick. He's trying to he wants to be a shooter. Yeah, the shooter. Yeah. But then Tony Mama Luke wants to, you know, embrace the full blooded Italian gimmick. It's a whole thing. It's a whole hullabaloo. But yeah, I guess it, did, did either of you watch this match? No. <laughs> Who was the one that did watch a little bit? Justin. I, I did. And by a little bit, I mean very little bit because I think <laughs> I, I totally misunderstood the whole fucking premise of what we were doing but that's all right because we can feed off your vibes brother so kick it dude i'll just do it solo and you guys just like be my hype man yeah flavor (laughs) flavor. (laughs) that's all i need that's all i need um let's see here what happens after this oh then so after that match we get more christopher street connection Ooh. Uh, once again i was hoping you would say that (laughs) take it into the street yeah, and I guess they finished their previous bananas, so they <laughs> they find somebody backstage and ask them for their banana, and then and then it just goes to the next match. So just reinforcing that they're gay for the viewers who aren't sure at this point. They really did that angle. That that really happened. Yeah, they're they're walking backstage. They they see just who is gotta that? eat all the bananas. Anybody's <laughs> bananas. If I'm done with mine, I'm going to eat yours. (laughs) It's very layered storytelling, if you can't tell. You just got to keep up with it, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Three-dimensional chess. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so you you guys got to know about Prince Nana, right? Oh, yeah. So this is like very early Prince Nana. I think he transitions into being just a manager at at some point. Right. But just some some backstory here. So in the previous show, he had a match with Loki. And who would have thunk it? Loki knocked him the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) Very hard, very stiff. Very stiff, as am I. But he knocked Prince Nana out. And so now, look, it it looked like a a real knockout when I was watching it, but it probably wasn't. 
But the whole thing here is that Nana had a concussion, and now he's like paranoid of getting hit in the head again. So I like that angle. I do. It was good. So it's Prince Nana and his servant, uh, Jacob's Ladder. Virgil? Virgil. <laughs> might as well have been. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, was, Jacob's was, Ladder. Jesus. <laughs> is that like a Prince Albert? You know, looking at him, he, he was very tattooed, and it was, it was pretty close. It was pretty close. <laughs> Versus Christian York and Joey Matthews. Yeah, Joey Mercury, a.k.a. Absolutely. And speaking of names in this match, the manager with York and Matthews is Alexis Lurie. Ooh, a.k.a. Mickey James. Look at this guy with the knowledge. Didn't even watch the show, but just knows every goddamn thing about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, the tag match. So it's, it's really centered around Prince Nana and how he doesn't want to get hit in the head. And then he gets enziguried by Joey Matthews and then he like runs away. And then his, his fucking partner just gets shit canned by the other guys. So York and Matthews get the win here. Um, this is like, we were talking about like women's wrestling before. So you have Alexis Lurie or Mickey James out there in the commentary. Steve Carino in commentary just nonstop. Oh, let's get a look at that ass. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's like 10 it's, minutes of them just going, oh, ah, oh, ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it might as well have been. Swing. <laughs> oh god but yeah it, it sounds like i'm exaggerating but i'm really not it was like uh it was, it was, it was absurd and then after this because the segment clearly needs more who comes out the christopher street connection comes out oh my god <laughs> again they, they've eaten all the bananas that that this fucking high school gym has to offer now they come out to the ring and they have this manager with them. I think her name is Allison Danger. So Allison grabs the mic and she's talking to Mickey James. And she basically says, you know, you want me because I guess everybody's gay here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they all start brawling. And then one of the commentators is like, is this gay bashing? Which is kind of a funny line because they're beating up the gay guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then. Then we get to the, uh, the the purest wrestling that we see on this show. Allison Danger puts sparkles on her hand and spanks Mickey James. Oh, my God. I'm <laughs> glad I didn't watch this shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. It didn't. I mean, it was going for something. You know, it's kind of like the mist. I feel bad I didn't watch it. Can you tell us what happened again? But I just can't. talk talk real slow, though. Yeah, and sick, kind of like Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> no, please. There's there's nowhere to go from uh, Alice in Danger spanking sparkles under somebody's ass. <laughs> um. <laughs> I didn't know it was a move. <laughs> I so like it's, it. It's a, it's a finish. It's a finish. Um, so after this... We get uh, so the Texas Wrestling Academy, Shawn Michaels School, is a heavy presence on this show, and there well, we see that in this match. So we have Michael Shane and Biohazard versus Don Juan and Paul London. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah, Paul love London, Paul yes. London. Fuck yeah, who doesn't? Michael Shane, didn't he? Uh, he did some shit with TNA, didn't he? He did, he did, and his whole thing. I don't know, like when he. Or fuck, is he even still wrestling? I don't really know what happened to Michael Shane. I don't even think I mean, he knows what happened. <laughs> <laughs> he just woke up one day. Le who the her? He might as well have. But do you know who his uncle is? I don't. Fucker? Shawn Michaels. Really? Oh, okay. So I do. That's why I do know Michael Shane. Yeah, okay. I got you. Yep. And that's like his entire gimmick is, hey, I'm I'm the real showstopper and all that. Oh, God. All that shit. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this tag match here is basically the winner gets a uh, contract with Ring of Honor. And but it's very confusing because so it's a tag match, right? Mm -hmm. Two on two. You with me? Yep. But only one person gets a contract. So what the person who makes the pin or what? Yes. Yes. So it's like, why is it a tag match and not a fatal four way? You know yeah. what I mean? Am I, mean, I, am I wrong there? Am I off No, base? I mean, wouldn't the other guy, like your tag partner, be pissed? Like, fuck you, man. I want a fucking contract. Funny you say that, because that's exactly what happens in this match. <laughs> <laughs> Both <laughs> teams have occurrences where that happens, where they got the guy beat and the, the teammates like, hey, uh, uh, and uh, the whole shit, you know? 
Um, great book. Yeah, great booking. <laughs> but this basically, you know, lights a lights uh, the beginning of a feud between Michael Shane and Paul London, who, in all reality, are the only guys in this match that ever really amounted to anything. Um, yeah, I, I know. I know they had a bunch of matches like later in Ring of Honor too. Do you guys you, have you guys seen any of those? I think I've seen one. I'm sure, it's pretty neat. I'm sure there's a lot of super kicks. Yeah, dem- pro- most definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you guys got to know it's a hit squad, right? I know about the Desi hit squad. I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think. I don't think these are these guys. I think it's a different group. Uh, give me one. Give me one of the names from the hit squad. Monster Mac. Monster Mac. I and don't- uh, Dan Moff, who I thought oh, was more. Da- yeah. Okay. I know who Dan Moff is. I. I I don't really recall their tag team tandem, but anyway, kind of a package deal, kind of a package deal um, versus divine storm. This is fun. I, I love trying to explain this to people who haven't seen it. It's almost, <laughs> it's almost more fun. So they got quiet storm and Chris divine. Any knowledge on these guys? Uh, what, what was the storm? What was his name? Qu- Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm. No, I thought, man, I was thinking for some reason, I was thinking of fucking Crowbar from WCW. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he go by I, Storm or something? Some Storm? I have no idea. That sounds like a thing that may have happened. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, Ed, real quick to, to back up because it just popped up in my fucking head. So Michael Shane, uh, he, Michael Bentley, that's who he was in TNA. Is that no, he was Mike? He was Michael Shane for a little bit. Did he change his name? Yeah, to, or Matt Matt Bentley. Yeah, that's who it was in TNA. He was X Division champ. Was he? Yeah, I've been yeah. watching some old TNA too, and he's. I guess I guess he's doing it. Yeah, good for Michael Shane. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we can all be a little Michael Shane. <laughs> but yeah, this match. I mean, the Hit Squad. So, if, for anybody that doesn't know, the Hit Squad is basically like two. They're like two like big. I don't know if they're Samoan or if they're Puerto Rican or w- whatever it is. They're kind of interchangeable, right? Oh, Just two- <laughs> Jesus Christ. What did you say? <laughs> if you leave now, I won't be disappointed. <laughs> but yeah, they're basically building up to, because uh, they don't, they do not have the Ring of Honor tag titles um, at this point. And uh, they're basically building up tag teams for a one-night tournament. That'll happen, I think, in like a few shows. So, but yeah, to hit squad versus Divine Storm, it was essentially a squash match. Uh, to hit squad, not a squash match, but I mean, to hit squad are some big boys. So they worked in like a sprint, like like Goldberg esque, you know, very very fast, you know, hard hitting moves, and they get the hell out of there. Right. And then it's just a really weird finish where one of the hit squad guys has Chris Divine up for a power bomb. Chris Divine like starts to fight out, and then. I think it's Dan Moff who has them. Hits them with like a Gonzo bomb. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It looked really brutal. I don't know if he was blown up or what. Apparently, it was like 95 degrees in this gym. Oh, I'm sure he was fucking blown up then for sure. I can only imagine. But yeah, that gets him the win there. And then pretty quickly transitions into Nunzio, a.k.a. James Maritato versus Jay Briscoe. Nice. It's <laughs> hilarious to, to see Jay Briscoe in the beginning when he's literally still there in 2020. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome, though, when you think about it. I mean, uh, I, I would have thought at, at some period that the Briscoes, I mean, would have went somewhere else. You know, I, I don't know if they've had any offers from anybody. I know early in TNA that uh, they made an appearance when they do, they were two bald little skinny fucks. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> God, the Briscoes, yeah. you know, like, and what they've became. I mean, that I'll always consider them one of the best tag teams of the last 15, 20 years, you know? Absolutely. Very underrated in my opinion. Oh yeah. And their promos, especially like, like I said, the last decade or so have just been fucking on point, man, on that fucking chicken farm and just <laughs> <laughs> Sandy Fork, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, they definitely like came into their own for eventually. sure. But like here in 2002, they're still like just wrestlers, right? Kind of. And Mark Briscoe actually is 17 at this point. Wow. So that's why Jay is kind of going solo here. Tenderoni. Um, <laughs> exact what <laughs> <laughs> truth about a roni i'm not gonna ask 
But then, um, see, we got Jay Briscoe versus James Maritato here. It's, it's a pretty good match, but they're, uh, the story here is that they're kind of teasing tension between Jay and Mark. Um, and Mark can't wrestle in Philly because he's 17. But the next show is in Boston, and apparently just, they just have no rules there. So <laughs> they basically announced that Jay Briscoe is going to face Mark Briscoe at the next show. I'm crazy, finally right? in Boston. I'm going to get you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in really big trouble. <laughs> uh, but literally, though, that's literally what it is. And um, <clears throat> but yeah, the match itself, it ends. So, so Mark is ringside with Jay, obviously. But then he walks out. He says, fuck this. And then Jay's all pissed. And then Maritato sneaks up from behind and hits him with the kiss of death. No way. basically like an, an unprettier. He, he doesn't actually kiss him. I wish he would have. But uh, so that's pretty <laughs> much the, <laughs> the result of that one. But then, oh boy, howdy! This next match. If you if you guys watch one match from this show, don't watch this one. It's a <laughs> damn it <laughs> bunkhouse match. We just saw one in AW. Yep. Now we're seeing one in 2002. The Natural Born Sinners versus Carnage Crew. Oh, good names. I'll give you guys points if you know any of the people that are on these teams. Uh, I think I know Homicide was uh, Natural Born Sinners, wasn't Correct. he? Correct. Ding, ding. Um, who, who was the other guys? Boogaloo. It's Homicide and uh, Boogaloo yeah. is the Natural Born Sinners. Yeah, no, the other the other team. And Carnage Crew was uh, H.C. Loke and to- Tony DeVito. Okay. Well, I believe we're in ECW. At least I think HC Loke was. Yeah, yeah, that sounds. No, no, I think Devito was too as well. But I'm, I'm very, I'm very just shallow knowledge of ECW, so I can't really. I'm not gonna die on that hill. But <laughs> <laughs> not like they did. Not like they did. And this match, god damn, dude, it was like there was so much blood and so much gore. Like, I forget, I forget who said, you know, "Ring of Honor is, is all about the wrestling with no gore." N- nope. There was gore, <laughs> lots of gore here. Um, barbed wire. Oh yeah, cowbells. The notorious one eight seven himself, man. Fucking homicide. Come on, man. He's he literally. So I'm gonna bring up the story behind this match because it's hilarious. Well, Please hardest do. part of the ring. How how are you with? Uh, what's your opinion on hardcore matches? Like, I do not like them. What do you do? You like the blood and stuff? I I don't like that kind yeah. of stuff. Justin okay. does. You're a bitch, yeah. Threaten. Well, I just don't like it. It's yeah. right. You're entitled to your opinion, even though it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> just a kiss. Get a little bit Thank of tongue you. in there. Get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What What is your thoughts on the hardcore match? You know, it's, I mean, if done well, um, I can enjoy them. I'm not going to say I don't enjoy hardcore matches, but I think there are a lot of matches that kind of are just gore for the sake of gore. Right. Like, let's bring up like a current example. Uh, John Moxley versus Kenny Omega mm-hmm. at Full Gear 2019. It's okay. Full Gear, right? Yeah, yeah. I hated that match. Really? I uh, hated probably a strong word, but I didn't really. It just felt like, hey, let's do this spot. Okay, now let's do this overly contrived spot. Oh, now let's pull pull out barbed wire and do this spot. It just felt like spots. It's like a spot fest. Which is fine. I mean, if you enjoy that, like, I'm not gonna, you know, shit on your life for it. But like, for mm-hmm. me, it, d- it doesn't really hold my attention. Mm-hmm. So I think. But then you have something like, for example, Triple H versus Cactus Jack at Royal Rumble 2000. That's one of my favorite matches of all time, and it's very, very brutal. So I think if the story makes sense, I enjoy it. But uh, I think at times it, it, it's it's almost like a crutch that people use to like try to get cheap pops. I agree. That's that's the answer I was looking for. <laughs> you guys can't both like, disagree with me. Come on. No, oh, I, I, I very much <laughs> fucking can, sir. <laughs> Man, I, th- I thought I was just an asshole. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this match here is an example. I mean, I guess it was. I guess it was kind of entertaining. So I'm not going to say it was a bad match, but it was just very silly. It was just like it, it, there wasn't like peaks and valleys to it. Mm-hmm. It was just like, let's ring the bell and here's some barbed wire. And here's a cowbell and a bull rope. Uh, here, let's, here's a rubber chicken to the face. And here's, <laughs> here's a chair. And, oh, I'm sorry. No, because so the backstory, it's very important. It's very important that you guys can absorb the, uh, the storytelling elements 
of this match. Good, because so, I'm lost. So H.C. Loke. So I, I, need, I feel like I need like a whiteboard or something. So we have H.C. Loke, who was a referee on the first show. He was refing a match that the Natural Born Sinners were in. Mm-hmm. I think it's Homicide. Took a rubber chicken and hit his opponent with it. No way. Ow, fuck, that hurt. Right? Dude, I mean, you get hit with a rubber chicken really hard. I wouldn't like that. Would you? <laughs> no. Not no. unless I asked for it. and I was No one wants to be hit with a big-ass cop. Handcuffed cough. to a bed. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> so he hits the guy with the rubber chicken. And then H.C. Loke, who, remember, is a guy in the Carnage crew who is in this match. H.C. Loke disqualifies the Natural Born Sinners. So what do the Natural Born Sinners do? Well, they stab him. Yeah. Mass with that same style. chicken? No, with with just a like a, a regular sh- knife. A shank? The shank, a spike? It's like a spike. Like spike a r- is the word. Railroad yeah. spike, kind of like old school chic style? That's exactly what it was. Thank you. Thank you. He uh, stabs him in the head because he disqualified him. So, you know, naturally. Anger management. You know, a, a homicide. Yeah. He is, uh, could have used some classes. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the backstory here. And that's why this match is so bloody and brutal. So I guess there is a story to this of some sort. But like I said, it was just very like, you know, weapons, 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 barbed wire, barbed wire. Here, choke you out with this, whatever. Um, but it, I mean, God bless them for putting their bodies through it because it was uh, brutal. And uh, the finish comes when uh, Boogaloo has like some barbed wire, just like a strand of barbed wire, wraps it around the face of DeVito of the Carnage crew. And it's kind of similar to the the finish of uh, fucking, what was it, All Out, Full Gear, the last AEW pay-per-view. Oh, Eddie um, Kingston. Well, Eddie Kingston, where he made him say, I quit, yeah, with uh, yeah, it's, Moxley. It's, it's, Literally like the same finish, but across like the mouth instead of the throat. Dude, it, to tell you what, like I thought, I mean, in comparison, if you go, you obviously, I mean, you had to have watched the, uh, what was it? The Hardcore Justice in 2010, TNA. It's been a long time, but I did, yeah. The uh, It was uh, Dreamer and Raven. And like the, I think like the end, right towards the finish of that match, Dreamer had fucking... I think it was Raven. It was it was like the same thing, but the barbed wire was like all over his fucking face, dude. He's just yeah. stretching it back, you know, like Chris Benoit ain't got nothing on that motherfucking murderous move. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Old brother. How is Tommy Jr. still wrestling? Uh, Somebody answer me that. Because he is a badass mofo. He hasn't like toned down his style or anything. He's still fucking shoving kendo think, sticks up his ass or whatever he does yeah he just i think <laughs> is that what that, he does uh, that's what i see <laughs> he did that thing that everybody all the hardcore guys aspire to do but they never really reach is uh i think he calloused his whole fucking body so <laughs> <laughs> he's one big he's not fat he's just one big callus yeah you know so you fucking do anything you want to him tommy dreamer oh. human thumb <laughs> <laughs> if that's not a t-shirt i don't know what impact's doing he's with impact right yeah yeah who knows so yeah, bloody match here, bunkhouse match. Who even? Won? Oh yeah, the Natural Born Sinners win. Uh, but then the Carnage crew it will have none of this, so they attack the Sinners after the match. Dirty. But then the Hit Squad comes out because I guess they're all like of the same family or whatever with the Natural Born Sinners. So they come out and run off the Carnage crew. But then the Natural Born Sinners are like, "Hey, I don't need your help." It's it's like there's a lot of I I feel like you know like it's always sunny. You know yeah. that meme with like all the, like the, the whiteboard and like all the y- balls of yarn pointing different. <laughs> yeah. That's what I need for all the tag teams in the Ring of Honor at this point. But and they're all so, real sensitive. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it all comes together. Um, but yeah, what do we? Oh, after this, very interesting. We have an X Division Championship match on Ring of Honor, which is hilarious. I don't know if that was like a, a normal thing they did, or if this is like a one time thing. Well, um, they they used to. I know back in the day, TNA and ROH did have a pretty decent working relationship, and I think Jeff Jarrett probably fucked that up. Probably. I mean, it's interesting because, like, like before I like, get into the actual match, because it kind of ties into what's going on right now. And for anybody listening, we're recording this a day after AEW, where Kenny Omega won the title, 
and then it was basically announced that he would appear on Impact. So fucking on cool. Tuesday, which is crazy. It's awesome, dude. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of what this reminded me of because this this X, it's an X Division match, so it's TNA guys. It's like NWA TNA at the time, so it's guys that are in TNA, guys that are in NWA Wild Side. And that was like a common thread with Ring of Honor, like throughout the years, is cooperating with other promotions like right. you know, NOAA and New Japan, uh, you know, even TNA. There's, there's a lot of fluid movement between guys, between those companies throughout the years. And I think that is like a lot of, a lot of the, su- the success that they had was due to that cooperation. So, what do you guys think of like the the modern day stuff we're seeing with like Impact and AEW and? All those oh, guys working yes. together. I was, I was threatening you shut the fuck up for one second because I was, <laughs> I was hoping he was gonna ask me this question. Yeah, um, dude, I first of all, what I was ever, gonna say was, <laughs> you piece of fucking shoe, God, you're fired. Go ahead. Um, it, dude, it, it gave me a super huge hard on, and uh, just it, I think it's something. I was talking to Threaten last night after I was so pumped and like, dude, I mean, it's like nine ten o'clock when I called him. And I'm like, I, f- I feel like I just had like 18 cups of fucking coffee, you know, with with Sting debuting and, you know, all the haters of smart marks can say what they want. It If you're not a fucking wrestling fan, if you didn't at least appreciate that moment, you know, like Sting coming back on TNT, you could hear you could hear in Tony Schiavone's voice, man, like just how special that moment was. We don't know what's mm-hmm. going to happen with them. So there's a lot of speculation, which is very cool. And then we end like you, you think you can't really top that. And to me, I mean, Don Callis getting involved and in, you know helping Omega win the strap. They they run out and says you'll find out on Tuesday on Impact. I'm sitting there freaking the fuck out uh, because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's it's something that I thought should have been done a long time ago um, with a lot of different promotions. And it's something that if people want to seriously compete and or surpass or take most of WWE's audience. They have to band together. So, I mean, I know that AEW has a working relationship with AAA. They have a working relationship with Impact now, which is very apparent. Um, they've been hinting and dropping names from New Japan. Uh, it's 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 what's best for business. It's what's best for the wrestling fans out there because you're going to get all this incredible shit that could possibly happen. And I think, to me, it felt like as real as like I told Threaten last night as when Scott Hall walked out on Monday Nitro and you're like yeah. you know when I was a little kid and I was like what the this ain't supposed to be happening you know like that's, that's a good analogy that's the vibe I got and you don't get moments like that in professional wrestling really anymore you know it's it's mm-hmm. very fucking hard to come by so for them to do that and Don Callis being the awesome fucking businessman that he is and and kudos to everybody involved in this because I personally think, mark my words, right here, right fucking now, that this is just a small slice and beginning of something giant that's about to take place in the wrestling industry. That's that's going to happen. And as far as these major companies partnering up, and and I don't know what they're going to deliver, but that's part of the fun about it as wrestling fans. Hey, I don't, you know, I like to know some of the shit, the backstage shit and whatever, but I don't want to be in on everything because then it gets, you get some jaded ass fans or some people that think they know the business so well that it doesn't become fun to them anymore. And that's the right. guys that are sitting around, they're just smart marks and well, that you know, that wasn't cool because whatever stupid ass fucking reason they have. No, mm-hmm. sit back, enjoy it because you are a fan, you know, like. I, I think it's a great move for everybody involved. And when I say everybody involved, I mean every business that's partnering at all, the talent and all of us fans and media that cover all this shit, dude. It's it's a great fucking moment. Agreed. Absolutely. And yeah, with you know, you brought up Japan earlier because they haven't like formally announced anything. But I have a hunch because they did the whole thing where like Moxley was attacked backstage. And I have a feeling that New Japan has a part in that somehow. I do too. I don't know if it's like a faction, a faction that Kenny Omega starts, maybe. Yeah, well, that's see, brother, that's what I'm talking about. It's the great thing of speculating, not knowing. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas WWE is so manufactured that you could pretty much call every damn thing they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. And and that just dude, that it 
it kills me inside to like watch that shit. That's why I haven't been high on their product for like the last 15 years. Cause it's, it's Coca-Cola, man. It's, it's the big brand that's out there. It'll never go away, but it gets, yep. you're, it's really fucking stale right now, you know? Yeah. And even like when it's good, it's still like cookie cutter. Oh yeah. And, and they, and they ruin it. You know, they, they, they'll yeah. have something good and, and it's always, dude, it always gets fucking ruined. Cause they, they do have good stuff. Like Drew McIntyre has been great. Right, everything yeah. he's been doing is great, or like Roman Reigns and every all that USO stuff. And yeah, that new stuff, that new Roman Reigns dude, he's hot like fire. Fantastic, and like you know, NXT has you know it's it has its ups and ups and downs, but right, they they're still doing a lot of good shit over there. So yeah, like you said, even like the good stuff in WWE or any company really up to this point, it's like it feels like there's like a uh, like a mold, like it yep. feels like there's like a path. It's like, oh, this is happening now, so I guess we're gonna see this at the next pay per view, and they're gonna build to this, and it isn't that. But now we have we don't we don't know what to expect. Like Kenny Omega is gonna be on Impact. That's that's bonkers. It's like, not. I don't even know if that's like absorbed in right. my body yet. And you got you know if you go on Twitter and you see Tama Tonga kind of teasing some shit with pictures and a little bit of verbiage in his tweets, and you know you got the Good Brothers in Impact. Uh, it, dude, there's just so much. That's the best thing. That's the fucking best. You know, when you were a little kid and you were just like in awe and wonder of what was going to happen each week with your favorite, you know, wrestler and or group or wrestlers, that that was something special. And that hasn't been in wrestling in a long time, you know. And this is where I think AEW has hit it out of the fucking park because it, it people want to talk about an alternative, you know. I. I hear a lot of reasons why it's not an alternative and people want to say it and shit on it and say, well, it's just WWE lied or they're trying to, you know, same shit they were doing with TNA, but back in the day, TNA was trying to be WWE. I think what AEW is trying to do, they have to bring in some of those established stars, you know, some, uh, and rebuild some of the guys like your Rusevs or AKA Miro and bring in guys like Sting because there's so many things that connect, you know, at least on the Sting level, that, you know, the whole WCW TNT connection and yada, yada, yada. But dude, I think what they are doing is really truly an alternative. I mean, it, we all know what wrestling is. Now, is it mm -hmm. as sports centric as like MLW? No. But, you know, they're trying and they are giving you something different, something that I have thoroughly been entertained with each and every week you know and not just sitting here trying to be a fanboy even though i am mm -hmm. but dude <laughs> come on all of us pure wrestling fans have been around and when i say pure wrestling i mean just you love professional wrestling not just one specific type and brand you know right. like you fucking love wrestling there's something that draws you to it aew is kind of giving you that full fucking buffet of wrestling you want your death match they got it you want your awesome storytelling you got it you know you got pure wrestling match you got your fucking spot monkey shit flippy dippy shit i mean it's it's mm -hmm. just all there and it's been so well executed and i think with a lot of passion you know because you got a guy like tony khan who has billions of dollars and he is just a wealth of knowledge of the business you know like it's it, dude it's it really is as a wrestling fan i'm gonna say it right now it's, it's a fucking dream come true and i am so goddamn it's it's been a wild ride, man. All I can say is like going forward, everybody needs to fucking buckle up because shit's about to get fucking crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, like you said, WWE is that you know that Coca Cola, that brand that's never going to go away. And there's never going to be one company, in my opinion, that is just going to because you can have all the talent, you can have all the great matches and all the storylines and all that, but ultimately, people are going to associate WWE with wrestling. Yeah, yeah. good, bad. That that's just how it's going to be. But this, if all company, if these companies can band together and just create a new definition of what wrestling is, exactly. I th I think that is what's going to bring. I mean, it's going to bring everybody up. It's going to bring them up. It's going to bring WWE up. It's going to bring in new fans. It's going to you know solidify the fans that are already wrestling or uh, watching wrestling. It's a good time, man. Good time all around. I think. Yeah, it's it's so awesome. It's exciting. And and the last couple of years you know like when we first started our show uh it was it was built on the back of dude there's something exciting going on like in professional wrestling there is i felt it i was like dude there's a boom coming you know it's i haven't felt this way about wrestling in a long time and it's super fun again and it's it's okay to 
say that you fucking like wrestling again. You know, I mean, because there there's a lot of good shit. It's not just the w, cookie cutter WWE shit. And I, mm-hmm. I like what you just said. You know, about getting people to realize that that you know WWE isn't the only game in town, and they shouldn't be the only ones associated with the term wrestling. Because let's face it, the guy who owns the motherfucking company don't even like that. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen anything this great in wrestling since uh, David Young versus Adam Jacobs oh, versus okay. AJ Styles. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you're, it's it's so cool because you're seeing that kind of cooperation here in this show, right? Um, and it's just it's just you know hilarious to to watch AJ Styles in 2002 coming off that uh, WCW run that brief, you know, right when they closed their doors, you know, AJ was coming up. Man. I always forget that he was with WCW. Mm-hmm. That is, I think insane. I want to say Christian York was too. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I care about anything less than Christian York. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's, Shots uh, fired towards Christian York. I, when he hears this, woo. oh man, oh man, man. He, he tried to look like he was fucking uh, what's his name, Head from Corn, the guitar player. <laughs> No, <laughs> I thought I literally when I first saw him, I thought he was Tyler Rex from oh. WWE. Do you remember that guy? Yeah, I sure do. He's kind of like a like a deflated version of him. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to paint the picture for everybody, you know. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the, the cast of characters in this match. So David Young went on to be like a jobber in TNA. Mm-hmm. Um, literally, his gimmick in 2005 because I'm watching it right now is that he he's like the Kurt Hawkins of TNA. Basically, just doesn't win matches. And Adam Jacobs, I, I Googled Adam Jacobs. I, I Googled Adam Jacobs, a ring of honor. Hmm. And what came up was a match between Adam Cole and Jimmy Jacobs. So that just goes to show <laughs> yeah, yeah. the, the impact the, that Adam. It's like, uh, you ever seen Tenacious D, the pick of destiny? I have not. I know <gasps> what it is, though. <laughs> There's a, I'm, not, I'm not a big Jack Black guy. No, that's all right. Well, never mind my joke then. But No, go for it. No, no. Here, I'm well, ready, there's, I'm ready. there's a little skit in there where they have a flashback and their kids and uh <laughs> fucking Kyle Gas is uh he's wearing like a wi- or no here yeah they have a flashback to when they're kids but he's like older and fucking like his hair or his wig blows off or something and, and Jack Black just looks at KG and he's like who are you <laughs> and it does this <laughs> weird flashback fucking thing it's funny people out there listening you know what I'm talking about you get it Nobody knows what you're talking about. They fucking but, know. And, <laughs> nobody knows Adam Jacobs either, apparently, because I Googled <laughs> him and I found him eventually. And But then there's just nothing on him. I think he's like kind of a guy that just stuck with NWA, like even like in their like dead period. Oh, when just they like, were like everybody was. And that's so NWA was pretty much dead for a long time. And then you had like people would just throw NWA on a fucking, like, some shithole town, wherever they're at. They mm-hmm. have a wrestling promotion. It's NWA Wildcat. Yep, and they expect to see Dusty Rhodes, and they get Adam Jacobs. Yeah. <laughs> what a <laughs> kick in the net. <laughs> I'm sure he's a nice fellow. But then you have AJ Styles here. It, and essentially, this match is the AJ Styles show. Oh, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a three-way elimination match, and obviously AJ Styles is the X Division champion, who in the that's the title that he's defending in this match, and uh, AJ beats uh, David Young with the spiral tap, or as Donnie B put it on commentary, a spinny thingamajiggy. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, fucking these guys! I, this the commentary almost ruined my day. I, I'm sure, man. That's that's pretty fucking rough. I mean, that, and that that's a move that I, I miss, and I'm sure he could probably still pull it off, but. Maybe doesn't want to because he doesn't have yeah. to. You know, he got smarter, worked smarter, not harder. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he has only so many bumps on his bump card. Right. So he's trying to maintain as many as he can, I guess. So he beats David Young with a spiral tap, and then he beats Adam Jacobs with a beautiful second rope Styles clash for the win. And like I said, it's matched probably like five minutes long, and at AJ Styles just shits all over these guys. <laughs> <laughs> like South Park shits? You know, in exactly. South Park, whenever someone takes the shits, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that how they puke, or is it the same? I think it's both. Sometimes they fucking puke poop out of their mouth. You ever seen that one? That's how they throw up. That's how they poop. That's how they <laughs> ejaculate. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to title this episode poop out of their mouth because <laughs> 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 that's what this is. Um, 
<laughs> so yes, and then after this, we get man. All right, I'll, I'll give you guys a thousand dollars if you know any of these guys. Dunn, Marcos, and Mike Tobin versus Black Gordman Jr., Dixie, and Brian XL. Oh man! Yeah, nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> so I even don't. Because I've been watching all the shows up until this point, and the only guy I recognize is Brian XL, who, for all intents and purposes, is Lil Bow Wow. So, <laughs> again, and this is another like fast forwarded, you know, highlight reel match. I don't know if the match is just bad or if they're just trying to get to the main event, whatever it is. He's probably like some local, like Philly guys, like indie Philly guys or something. I don't know. So, I know some of them are from the Texas Wrestling Academy, and that, that, that there's a lot of them in Ring of Honor during this time. Otherwise, yeah, it's just a uh, – I don't know why this match is here, honestly. But <laughs> some – so this this big black dude in a suit comes out after this match. Actually, and- real quick, I do. I uh, I just did a, a search because I, I, that Brian XL sounded really familiar. He ran House of Glory with Amazing Red. Oh, did he really? Yes. That's funny because him and Amazing Red had a few matches before this. Um, I think they might even – teams at some point so that makes sense yeah i believe it. he's kind of they're kind of similar just amazing reds a lot better um <laughs> so yeah the match ends and then uh, some big black guy in a suit comes out and choke slams all of them mr hughes uh, you know it could have been donnie b described him as a large individual with a rastafarian appearance so <laughs> bob marley's a uh, 12th son that we didn't know about <laughs> sounds like you're describing me <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Sren. I can tell. I can tell from your voice. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an easy transition into the next match: Scoot Andrews versus Xavier. Xavier just passed away. He did. That was really sad. Did it ever come out like how he died? Uh you know he what? Be young. I can't remember uh, to be honest with you, because he was like forty-two or something. Yeah, super sad. Um. But this is like this is his high point in his career, right? Like early Ring of Honor, because he re- he wins the title within like a few months after this, I think. Um, and he has the look. Like I don't know if you guys remember Xavier, but he he looked like a star. Yeah, yeah, as, totally. As, especially compared to all these like two th- early two thousands indie guys, with yeah. like all the baggy clothes and the headbands. And the- <laughs> yeah, jobbers. <laughs> remember yeah, exactly. early two thousands too? Everybody was all about like the super shiny like pleather fucking tights. <laughs> Dude, every time I created a wrestler in one of the video games, it was always like Hardy Boys. Yeah, yeah. That kind of that kind of vibe. So I get it. <laughs> I can't chill on too much. But then Scoot Andrews, he uh, his moniker is the Black Nature Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was uh, Wiz Khalifa or whoever the fuck he did. Ric Flair did a rap fucking no. song with. <laughs> it's like where are you going with that <laughs> no yeah that that makes more sense though that makes sense uh scoot andrews is i mean he's a wrestler yeah rick flair was a wrestler it's about where it stops yeah that's, that's pretty much it it's pretty much it so they've had actually had a few matches at this point even though this, this is only the fifth show that ring of honor has had but they scoot and xavier have had a few matches and scoot lost to Xavier in their first match um, and is basically trying to avenge that loss and he says if he loses this match he's going to loo- leave Ring of Honor forever which is kind of unnecessary because he ends up winning so I guess he's going to stick around thank God more of the black nature boy um, <laughs> thank God God yeah well I'll have to bring you guys on on the next show um, and then you can watch Scoot Andrews because he, he's a treat he's a treat let me tell you like treat Williams but, I, I would I'd prefer that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this next match is the main event. And it is a one-hour, four-way Iron Man match. I'm going to go over every spot in the match. And then um, I'm going to stop after every spot and ask you guys about it. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. Fuck, no, fuck you. It's not fucking. <laughs> How dare you do that to me? So we got Loki versus Spanky versus Doug Williams versus Christopher Daniels. And um, so it's very, it's interesting uh, stipulation here because we just saw this in NXT uh, kind of recently. 
And I, I'd never heard of a, like a multi-man Iron Man match before. But this one was a little different. So you get two points for a victory, negative one for a defeat. Do you guys prefer that over just, you know, one per victory? Uh, I like confusing myself when I'm trying to watch <laughs> a dudes punch each other. So, yeah, I, I, I get what they were trying to go for. I mean, next time they should try fractions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say yes and no. I'm kind of 50, 50 on that. It was very, because it's 2002 and I mentioned their, uh, their production value earlier or lack thereof <laughs> and uh <laughs> it would have helped if they had like some kind of ticker at the bottom or right some sort of score but they didn't obviously because why would they and how i was they? confused the crowd was confused but i mean luckily there weren't too many falls in this match so i guess that was fine but i like the premise but i feel like it could have been executed a little better as far as like the presentation of it so i, th- I believe Daniels gets the first win after pinning Loki with the last rights, which is basically a crossroads kind of. So that, that puts Daniels at two and then Key at negative one. And then stuff <laughs> happens. <laughs> Scott Steiner comes out and like, you have a three and four quarter chance of me and my brother whipping your fat ass. <laughs> Legitimately, that that's almost like what it was like listening to the commentary, try to like fill with their notes. They have, they have their calculator out. It's like with the paper. It's like trying to figure out <laughs> who has what score and who needs to pin who. And it was all very contrived. And I guess I can see why they kind of got away from this. But um, basically, Doug Williams and Spanky, neither of them get any falls. Um, this is essentially, it, it, it might as well have been Loki versus Christopher Daniels. I feel like that would have been a cleaner way to do it. Um, especially since at the time, these are the two biggest names that they got. Right. Low key in particular is like super over at this point. Um, and Daniels is a really good heel. So Spanky and Doug Williams are there just to do some sliced breads and chaos <laughs> theories and all that shit. But uh, ultimately, the score ends up with Low key winning with three points. Daniels had only ends up with two, but Daniels doesn't lose. So it's, it's all it's to like layer it and confuse it even more. Daniels loses without losing. Key ends up getting out the win here and wins the first ever Ring of Honor world title. And I believe Loki is still wrestling to this day. Oh, yeah. Right? MLW. Yep. I think he literally didn't they have a show last night. Yeah, he wrestled uh, last night. Yeah. Every, every Wednesday. MLW yeah. Fusion. Check it out, kids. Hell yeah. What are you guys' opinions on Loki? Because he's kind of a divisive guy in wrestling, I think. Um, In ring. I, I like him um, outside of the ring. Yeah, maybe not so much. Um, I think mm-hmm. he'd be great for vo- voiceover work. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> um, I know he, he he wasn't very much liked uh, in his little WWE tenure that he, he tried to do. Um, it, I like him. I, I've seen him live several times. Uh, dude, he works fucking great in the ring. He's very stiff, dude. What, and I... I, I don't know. I can't really say anything bad about him as a wrestler, dude. I think he's fucking, I think he's the shit. Hell yeah. He's definitely got like a unique presence about him. Like, even sure. to this day, when I see, he's still like wrestling at a similar pace as he was. Oh, he yeah. Looks, he looks great. Exactly. Like, I want to know what workout regimen that dude is on. Dude, it's uh, a little bit of Red Bull and uh, a lot of crack. <laughs> I mean, he strikes me as a dude that just does fucking knuckle push-ups on concrete and oh, yeah. does that all day. And that's that's how he gets the body he has. Dude, I seen him uh, MLW live in Cicero, Illinois. It was a it was a cage match. It was him and Tom Lawler. It was fucking mm-hmm. awesome, man. What is so? I mean, uh, MLW is a company that I've like. You've been sleeping on. I, I, I like I've been aware of it and <laughs> I gotta sleep like, with it, not on it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta sleep inside it. Yeah. But it's been like it's one of those companies where I'm like, man, I need to start watching that. But then I just never do for some reason. I, there's just so much wrestling to keep up with. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys uh what are you guys' thoughts on MLW as a company? I love them. Um I know me and Sredden have went to a couple shows together. I've been to quite a few of them. Uh like I said, I went to the uh their first pay per view. Uh, here in Chicago, Cicero, whatever you want to call it. We'll just call it Chicago. Um, mm-hmm. 
I, I think everything they do is great. And the new presentation of Fusion is fucking amazing. It's got like, they got the old smoky look to it, you know, like old NWA or WCW. Yeah. I saw some clips of it. It looks really good. It's cool. They even got like like old school boxing. You know, they got like the names up in the top and the the ticker, the time fucking clock and shit. And it's very sports centric. It's the most sports centric promotion you'll find. And I know uh, Court mm-hmm. Bauer, who used to be a writer for uh, WWE back in the day, um, he he wants to present it like that. And it's it's called Major League Wrestling, but it's it's more combat sport that's what he likes to you know to coin it yeah uh which i i think is very cool man because it's it's a mix of everything it's lucha it's you know strong style it's uh japanese strong style the british hard style it's fucking deathmatch hardcore it's it's all yeah. over the place that, that's really cool and they have a bunch of they have a bunch of really really good promo guys on their roster oh yeah and some of the best promos are on our you go watch really? and them and lmw and one thing that's missing from a lot of these we it's a topic we talked about a couple weeks ago is like wwe again not to knock it but they uh like it's very predictable like the almost every promo sounds exactly the same and then aw yeah. you got like guys like moxley who are just geniuses with a mic in their hand um and then but some people really suck on the EW <laughs> roster at mm-hmm. promos. Whereas MLW, like I'm, who sucks? Give me some names. I'm actually not that like. Is I'm a huge fan of the Young Bucks, but I don't like they do that stutter thing when they <laughs> promos. And even Kenny Omega yeah. does the thing too, where they like do like this this stutter thing. And I don't know if it's just the acting thing. Um, I, who am I? Who am I thinking? Man, also, now I'm never like, gonna be able to unhear it. It th- so they'll you'll if you watch BTE. On YouTube, they they do it like often, where they'll go, "What what 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 are you trying to?" S-? You, you'll hear it. It's, I just right. did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? They, I mean, that's it's kind of weird you say that because now I think about it. I mean, and I love those guys, but they really are not great promo guys. No, a lot of, a lot of the guys on the AEW roster uh, roster aren't aren't the greatest. And then you get Brian some Cage. Are, oh man, what was this? Was it uh, last night or maybe it was the week before? It was like Taz, no, Ricky Starks, Ricky Starks cut a promo, but Cage was behind him. Mm. And then Ricky Starks, who's, by the way, a great promo guy, one of those they got. Yeah, yeah. He cuts this awesome promo, and then (laughs) Cage just takes the mic, and he's like, oh my god, what does he say? He he says, like, one thing, and he, like, Who better? Throat cut. Yes, that's what it is. Who better? And even that, he, like, bungles. Yeah, and that's that's a tribute to Canyon. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yes. Remember Chris Canyon? He was a Absolutely. he was good friends with him. Um, you know who better than Canyon? Uh, yeah, it, they yeah. they got a lot of work to do on their promos and stuff. But it, it, like Sredden said, MLW dude, and we've had a lot of their talent on our show, man. Um, it, I just across the board, man. They, they're really great. Like people are really fun. A lot of people are sleeping on these guys, you know, it's, and I wish that they would kind of get involved and who knows they might, they just may get involved with this whole situation that I think is going to happen with, you know, Mm -hmm. wrestling and what I like to call the uh, revenge of the territories. (laughs) Exactly. That's a really good nickname. Cause I was going to say that you, so another thing we talk about, cause we talk about possibly throwing shows in the future. Cause we love this shit so much. And I'm, like I said, I'm the new guy. So I'm trying to learn everything, but uh, old school fans of fans of old school wrestlers and old timers that used to love wrestlers talk about the territory days. And Tony Khan is a billionaire, and most of these wrestling promotions, even like New Japan, which is you know a multi million dollar company, is not like a baller ass company. Nobody is as large as WWE. You finally got a billionaire, so you might create these like cyber territories, and it's good to call it like revenge. Of, of the territories because it man i i hope it'd be awesome if it happened where you get i mean that i couldn't sleep last night like uh, from yeah, from right. like just rampant speculation and, <laughs> and i don't even know that much about these different promotions you know uh juice is the fucking encyclopedia like i'm i'm the guy that just tries to you know hopefully make the mics work when we record <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I agree man it's uh dude it, like and even right now, I got to get my 64 hook back up. This is like the type of shit that gets me like back on the no mercy and I'm creating, you know, my rosters and different characters from different promotions and playing out the fucking storylines in my head on there, you know? Yeah. 
But I mean, the the idea of champions like like you know wrestling for for somebody's championship from another promotion, you know, thieving the bad guy, everything. I mean, it's it's it, it mm-hmm. could it could be it could be amazing. And all it will do is make WWE step up their game, and that's even more exciting to have to to actually be able to pick the wrestling you like. I mean, you kind you kind of can right now. One of the things we kind of beat to death is the point that. We like wrestling, so we mostly talk about what we like. I'm the guy of of our trio that talks the most shit about, you know, different promotions and stuff. But I still like it. I, you're going to catch me 90% of the time talking positively because this is fun to watch. Um, there's so much shit and darkness and uh, divisive and political stuff that you get outside of this. This is like this. It's just it's 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 entertainment. Yeah, it's, it's the sports, escape. It's action. The escape. You know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because especially nowadays, there's something for everybody. Like you said, MLW, if you just want sports, you got that. If you want WWE and the spectacle that they have, you can have that. If you want AEW, if you want like the UK scene has a ton of promotions, Japan, Mexico, the old stuff. If you want to get a WWE network and just watch retro stuff. I mean, there's literally something for everybody, but people just want to critique shit just for the sake of critiquing, I think. And you know what I'd like to see, too, is, okay, so to give you an example, uh, during the Monday Night Wars, right, we had upwards of, like, 9 to 10 million people watching wrestling every fucking Monday night, which is an insane. No, I mean, back then, dude, they were doing bigger numbers than fucking Monday Night Football, you know, which is, you think about it nowadays, and that's just kind of ridiculous, but it fucking was true. Um, It's not... It, it wrestling, I think, is like you know, going back to what I said earlier, this this big boom that's about to happen or is in the process of happening. I I think wrestling is big again, and especially with all the wrestling that there is, there was never this much that we had the ease of access to when we were mm-hmm. watching the Monday Night Wars and shit. You know, it was like WCW, ECW, and WWF. That's and you knew where to find them. And yeah. now with the the internet age and some, the way that these indie promotions are going, dude, a lot of these indie promotions are cranking out fucking matches and content and spectacles that are better than like a WWE. Like we got Warrior Wrestling and Freelance around us and AAW, excuse me, they're doing amazing things that I could sit through a, a whole two, three hour show and, and just be like, man, that felt like it was like fucking... 10 minutes long because i had so mm-hmm. much fun you know whereas you dude you watch a three hour fucking tour of monday night raw and you just want to fucking blow your brains out because it's like what am i doing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know um but yeah. i would i would be curious to see the combined numbers viewership numbers of the major promotions that are on you know the quote-unquote free cable television um combined with who's watching on like these networks because you know you got the wwe network but you also have new japan world you have the impact plus app you have the honor club um it's just so much shit dude that i i do think more people are watching wrestling nowadays but i think it's just it's not all accounted for because it's spread out it's spread out right then it's not our way of consuming it has changed drastically since you know 20 years ago so even like NWA Power, I was really big into that. Yeah, I love and it, dude. Into the fire, dude. It was so <laughs> cheesy, but so awesome. It was and great, it was awesome. dude. That and MLW are both on YouTube, correct? Yes. Yep. So that's just another another way of consuming information or consuming entertainment. You yeah, know, and AEW go- Dark too, man. Dark is solid oh, programming God. too. It's endless. And then Progress, I've been watching, has their own streaming service. Like, and then this is just wrestling we're talking about. I mean, you go back to the Monday Night Wars, you had, you know, whatever channels were on TV. Mm -hmm. You had five channels to choose from. And now we have all these different kinds of wrestling we can watch, but we also have Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max. And we have, you know, video games and all this shit. So when people compare like ratings from the early 2000s, you can't, you really can't. can't. It's It's totally different. Yeah. It's not even apples and oranges. It's fucking apples and fucking onions or some shit and i don't know yeah that's the thing that kind of i wouldn't say really i don't want to use the wrong uh verbiage here but like i wouldn't say worries me but kind of has me like yeah when you know tony khan and them it's like their mission to bring a lot of these people back and that's great but how do you gauge that you know mm-hmm. uh, other other than just i mean well they have the cable show but you know you got to take in the fact too there's people watching dark 
you know, and, and people watching other content of yours on YouTube. You know, we didn't have clips and shit on YouTube. Exactly. You know, like back in the day, it's it's just it, the numbers game and all that shit. It's so weird, and just the amount of professional the audiences wrestling. back then. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to get on this topic because I thought it would take too long to explain it. But um, back then, you really only had one or two revenue streams to to make money in these companies. And even right. though you had ten million viewers, you only had certain like t shirts. You can get t shirts. You can get like WWF back then stuff at like Walmart or wherever. But it wasn't so easily accessible. Now there's double, at least double that amount of revenue streams. So even though the audience is smaller. Um, it's smaller on like a USA watching TV, but it's mm -hmm. it's actually a global audience, and you have all the different revenue streams off the internet, all the merch, different dude. yeah, merch all the different nuts, ways no. that you could sell merch. Um, and then as the individuals with the wrestlers, the ones that are allowed, you have different like Twitch streams you can make money off of, sell your own stuff. Uh, you know, maybe some of these wrestlers have Etsy's <laughs> where they have designer <laughs> socks, Effie, and shit, but Effie's got, but Etsy's. just the. Yeah, so so you have you do have different revenue streams to account for the fact that the audience is you're not going to get like a rating of of ten million people on a Monday night. Maybe you'll get a tenth of that, but I mean you also have global audiences. The potential for that's why this whole thing about possibly opening the doors to um, you know Impact, New Japan, Ring of Honor, you know whoever AEW is about to have a relationship with. I mean, it opens up that global audience even more. So it might be 10 million Americans 20 years ago. Now it's going to be, you know, globally somewhere. Maybe it's 7 million people. Who knows? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think because the ratings just came out like a few hours before we started recording. And yeah, it was what, interesting what are to those? Me. So it was like roughly. So AEW had about like 930,000 and NXT had about like 630 or something like so that. So I think, yeah. So. I remember from last, and I hate to pay attention to those ratings because who the fuck no, are we yeah. to, you know, give a shit about the ratings? Like, enjoy the show. Just enjoy the fucking show. But uh, I think that's like a 200,000 viewership jump for AEW and about a 100,000 decline for NXT. Well, NXT, because the thing I was going to bring up is that NXT, it's, that's kind of a normal number for NXT. Really, right. Especially for a show that they didn't really book too much you know high stakes stuff on it it wasn't really promoted at all like because they knew fucking aw was going to have an amazing show so i don't think they're you know trying too hard to cross promote or a uh, counter program anything mm -hmm. um but it was interesting because it the, just the overall number between the two companies seemed to increase which is good to see because that shows that there's potential for growth oh you yeah because you know you have sting Coming in that brings in, Dude. you know, maybe some lapsed fans, some casuals, some right. some people that haven't watched wrestling in a while. But then you have Moxley and Omega kind of solidifying the people that are already watching. And then you have the show ending with you know the, all, all the impact stuff. And now you have all the wrestling fans that maybe don't watch AEW, right? Kind of paying attention to it. So it, it's they're like reaching for all these different directions, which I think is good because I think that's going to be key in them building. That is exactly. You you just said it perfect, dude. As far as growth and what AEW is doing, that's how you grow a brand new company and brand. You know, they brought they knew what they were doing with Sting. Just like you said, the the jaded fans or you know, the fans that they're flipping through the channels that watched 20 years ago. It's like, oh shit, Sting's on here. And they hang around exactly. for a little bit longer. Then they see Moxley and Omega, and it's like, oh, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, like that's that's it's the whole purpose of what they were trying to do. Business yeah. kids. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's hopefully they keep the momentum going. I mean, I don't know, like we said at the beginning, I don't know what Sting is going to be doing there. I mean, he's 60, like 61, 62 years old or something. Yeah. I don't really expect him to wrestle, but, uh, but I mean, hey, look at, look at Edge, you know, and Daniel Bryan. I mean, yeah. the guys that, you know, both were never supposed to wrestle again, but, you know, they beat the odds. And, and I believe I saw some, some interview Sting did maybe a couple months ago where he said he can go like he, he's been cleared by a doctor mm -hmm. to actually do some shit again. And I, you know, I wouldn't expect them to be doing too much, but they're saying he's going to be on the show regularly. So I'm excited. He looked, I mean, it's hard to tell with a shirt and a coat on, but he did look like he lost a little bit of that gut that he had like five years ago. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't expect them to be taking any Canadian destroyers or anything, but right. Like 
his his presence alone. I mean, even if he's just a guy, like a I don't want to call him a manager. I don't really see him as a manager, but whatever is that's just the thing. We don't know, right? And that 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 fact that we're speculating shows is is, is what companies should be reaching for, in my opinion, is that interest and that not knowing what's going to happen well exactly and that's that's the draw of professional wrestling in the mid to late 90s was the cliffhangers you tuned Mm -hmm. in every week because you were like holy shit this just happened you know with the nwo or with stone cold um you know both opposite sides of the fucking plate but whatever one you liked or if you watched both you wanted to know what was going to happen next and dude that's how i was i remember going into school like the you know, on a Tuesday after a Monday night, um, Nitro or Raw, and like, holy shit, you know, did you guys watch this? Like, what the fuck are they going to do next week? And, yeah. and wrestling hasn't been like that. Like, come on, I haven't been excited for anything to happen on the next episode of Raw or SmackDown in at least a decade, at least, you know? Yeah. I mean, main roster shows, you can pretty much just like watch the pay per views and you'll be caught up. Yeah. And even those are hard, dude. Do. You get set up for yeah. disappointment a lot with those. That's why. I'll watch the NXT. I'll be watching this Sunday, you know, war games. Um, but other than that, like I'll watch the big four WWE pay-per-views and anything else. I'm just kind of like, Ugh, whatever, at least yeah. for right now until the product <laughs> gets better. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but hopefully one day they'll get back to being as good as ring of honor crowning a champion. 2002 <laughs> was <laughs> yes. no, at all. <laughs> I uh, I apologize if I wasn't clear enough on uh, expecting you guys to watch it. Um, even it's all I good. Send the link to it, but <laughs> you did. <nonetheless>, <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I thought I, I saw some of it, and I, that's my bad because I should have asked. I was like, I was like, all right, sent me this show. Like, it, am I supposed to watch the whole thing? And then whatever. That's just me being, dude. I'm so super busy with fucking everything, work and music and podcasts and life that like. I should have just asked a fucking simple question, but nonetheless, Jacking off every now and then, you know, you got to oh, that man. in. I, you know, I, <laughs> I do love that. <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, we'll, we'll do this again. Um, I'll, I'll find the shittiest show I can find and then I'll make you guys watch it. <laughs> and then, uh, then we'll do this again. <laughs> but yeah. It was good to like talk about, cause there's a lot of stuff going on in current, uh, wrestling. So it's good to get you guys to, to talk give about us a chance guys. to redeem ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? No, it's all good. I, I always enjoy talking about that shit, so it's all good. Fuck yeah! Well, thanks for having me on the fucking show and for having yeah, Strength thanks, on. Man. And uh, dude, I had a good time, man. Yeah, for sure. We'll do this again sometime. All right, brother. What a dandy that one was! Uh, once again, thank you to uh, Justin and Sretton from the Juice Pro Wrestling Podcast for joining me today. Little miscommunication, <laughs> but no worries. Still had a lot of fun with these guys, and we'll have them on again, and we'll uh, we'll do it as I planned one day. Um, but yes, thank you guys once again for listening. Uh, kind of gearing towards the end of the year, gearing towards my fiftieth episode slash one year ish anniversary of this podcast. Um, I've posted on social media and um twitter instagram that uh for my 50th episode uh the plan is to do like a q a kind of deal um so if you want to uh drop me a dm on twitter or instagram or if you can find those posts where i asked uh you to send me questions i think on twitter my pinned tweet is uh is that tweet where i asked already gotten a good amount of responses so far um but yeah load me up guys this is just gonna be a uh just your old boy hard hanging out with you. Hanging out with his wing out, so to speak, uh, as the kids say nowadays. Um, my wing's not going to be out. I mean, it could. It's just an audio medium. So, like, maybe my maybe my penis is always out during these shows. You don't know. You have no idea. I might not even be a person. It's going to let you sit on that one for a little bit. Anyways, the thought, not my... Not my penis. So we're going to end the show now. Um, (laughs) Yes, once again, thank you guys for listening. Apronbump.com. And check out all the other links to myself and Juice Pro Wrestling in the description as always. Thank you guys once again. I am turgid. I'm hard. 
It's the hardest part of the rings. My penis. We're talking more about my penis, everybody. <clears throat> I'm hard. Thank you.